This isn't how electric motors were supposed to work. For over a century, engineers followed the same rule. Metal coils, usually copper or aluminum, carefully wound and packed to move electrons and create magnetic force. But now, something strange is happening inside a quiet lab in South Korea. A team of researchers has built a motor that doesn't use a single gram of metal in its coils. No copper, no aluminum, just carbon arranged in a way that defies old assumptions. It sounds impossible, yet it spins, it runs, and it's about to change everything we thought we knew. Why Metal Coils Ruled for 100 Years To understand why this breakthrough feels so unreal, we need to rewind history a bit. Electric motors, in all their shapes and sizes, have always relied on metal. Copper especially became the gold standard. It's highly conductive, meaning electricity flows through it with minimal resistance. For decades, it powered everything from your desk fan to high-speed trains. Then came aluminum. Lighter and cheaper than copper, it found its place in certain motor designs where weight mattered more than efficiency. Still, both materials had the same core job, guide electrical current through tightly wound coils, create magnetic fields, and produce motion. This formula became so ingrained in engineering culture that few people even questioned it. Textbooks taught it as fact. Manufacturers built entire industries around it. Every electric car, drone, washing machine, and power tool owes its heartbeat to this simple metal and magnet relationship. But as technology pushed boundaries, cracks started to show. We needed motors that were lighter, more efficient, able to flex into new shapes and fit into places rigid copper simply couldn't go. Yet no matter how much engineers tweaked designs, one part stayed the same. The coils had to be metal. That was the limit until now. Because somewhere in South Korea, that limit just broke. The Carbon Breakthrough in Korea Deep inside a research lab at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology, a small group of engineers started asking a question no one dared to ask before. What if electric motors didn't need metal coils at all? This wasn't just a casual thought experiment. They knew the challenges. Metals like copper and aluminum weren't used by accident. They were chosen for a reason. Reliability, conductivity, and availability. But the team at KIST believed there was room for something better, something lighter, something fundamentally different. Their focus turned to carbon. Not the dull gray graphite you find in a pencil. This was carbon at the nanoscale. Imagine tubes made of pure carbon atoms, each one tens of thousands of times thinner than a human hair, yet stronger and more conductive than most materials we use today. These were carbon nanotubes. The next challenge? Arranging them in a way that electricity could flow smoothly, just like it does through copper wires. That's where their breakthrough happened. They developed a process called Lyotropic Liquid Crystal Assisted Surface Texturing, or LAST for short. It sounds complex, and it is, but the idea is beautifully simple. They aligned millions of these nanotubes into one unified flexible cable. They called this new material the Core Sheath Composite Electric Cable, or CSCEC. Unlike traditional wires, this wasn't rigid. It could bend, twist, and even stretch without losing its ability to conduct electricity. For the first time, researchers were holding a cable that had no metal but behaved like one. And when they built a motor with it, something incredible happened. It worked. How these carbon coils actually work. At first glance, it feels like a magic trick. How can a motor generate motion without metal wires carrying the current? But once you dive into the science, the answer starts to make sense. In a traditional motor, copper coils carry electric current. That current creates a magnetic field, which interacts with permanent magnets or other coils, making the motor spin. It's a simple but powerful process. With these new carbon-based coils, the fundamental physics hasn't changed. Electricity still flows. Magnetic fields still form. Motion still happens. What's different is the pathway the electrons take. Inside the CCC cable, millions of carbon nanotubes run parallel to each other, aligned with microscopic precision. 
These nanotubes act like highways for electrons, allowing current to flow with surprising efficiency. The researchers fine-tune the structure so that the density and alignment of the nanotubes mimic the behavior of metal conductors. Surrounding this core is a protective sheath, giving the cable both durability and flexibility. Unlike copper wires that risk breaking when bent repeatedly, this carbon cable can twist and flex without damage. When wound into coils and placed inside a motor housing, these carbon cables respond just like copper would. Apply a current and the magnetic field kicks in. The rotor turns, the motor runs, but now it runs with far less weight and with materials that could bend and stretch in ways no traditional motor ever could. What started as a risky materials experiment had turned into a working, spinning, electricity-powered reality. The Mind-Blowing Advantages Once the motor started spinning, the true scale of the breakthrough became clear. This wasn't just about making something work. It was about making something better in almost every way that mattered. First came the weight reduction. Copper is dense and heavy. In industries like aerospace, automotive, and wearable tech, every extra gram matters. Replacing metal coils with carbon nanotubes slashed motor weight by over 80%. That's not a small upgrade. It's a complete shift in design possibilities. Then there's flexibility. Traditional motors are rigid and bulky. The carbon-based coils change that. These new motors can bend, twist, and even compress without losing performance. Imagine electric motors woven into fabrics or embedded in soft robotics, machines that can move like muscles rather than machines. Efficiency also gets a boost. The aligned nanotube structure allows for faster electron flow, improving conductivity by more than 130% in some tests. This means less energy is lost as heat and more is converted into useful motion. And with less mass to spin, motors can start faster, stop quicker, and deliver more responsive performance. For electric vehicles, this could mean longer range with smaller batteries. For drones, it could mean higher flight times and better maneuverability. For medical devices, lighter and more compact designs could open new possibilities for wearable tech and implants. Even large infrastructure projects like smart grids could benefit, making installation easier and maintenance simpler. This isn't just a small improvement. It's the kind of upgrade that forces engineers to rethink what a motor can be and where it can go. The challenges no one talks about. For every breakthrough, there's always a reality check. And this carbon-based motor technology is no exception. The first big hurdle is manufacturing. Producing carbon nanotubes at scale is still difficult and expensive. Aligning them with the level of precision needed for high-performance electrical conduction is even harder. The last process, while groundbreaking, adds multiple steps that drive up production time and cost. Then there's the issue of conductivity. While these carbon cables come impressively close to copper, they're not quite there yet. In applications where every fraction of resistance matters, like high-performance motors or grid-scale power systems, this gap still limits widespread adoption. Durability is another concern. Carbon nanotubes are vulnerable to oxidation and moisture. Without proper sealing and protective coatings, long-term reliability could suffer. Motors exposed to outdoor environments or harsh operating conditions may face new types of failure we don't yet fully understand. There's also the unknown factor of health and environmental risks. Working with nanomaterials brings questions about long-term exposure and how these materials behave once they enter soil, air, or water systems. Research is ongoing, but for now, safety standards are still catching up with the technology. And finally, cost. Copper and aluminum are cheap. Carbon nanotube production, at least for now, isn't. That alone makes this technology exciting, but still out of reach for most commercial applications, at least for now. Why this is still under the radar? With all this potential, you might wonder why no one's talking about it. The answer lies in how material science works. Breakthroughs like this don't explode onto the scene like a new smartphone or a viral tech gadget. They move quietly, slowly. Right now, this carbon coil technology is stuck in that in-between phase. 
It's too advanced for hobbyists, too expensive for mass production, and still under testing by major players who prefer to stay silent until the technology is fully ready. Defense contractors, aerospace engineers, and advanced robotics companies are keeping a close eye on developments. Some are already running private prototypes, but none of them are eager to tip their hand just yet. There's also the simple truth that material science rarely makes headlines. Most of us only notice these innovations when they show up inside something we buy. A car that weighs less, a drone that flies longer, or a medical device that feels impossibly light and compact. Until then, this breakthrough will stay right where it is now, quietly changing the future one lab test at a time. For over a hundred years, electric motors spoke the language of metal. Their heartbeat was copper. Their strength was aluminum. But now that language is changing. In a quiet corner of the world, carbon is taking its place. Light, flexible, and engineered at the smallest scale imaginable, it's rewriting the rules of motion itself. This isn't just about making motors better. It's about making them different, lighter, softer, and more adaptable than ever before. The journey from lab bench to factory floor will take time. But when it happens, you'll know. Because your next motor might hum with carbon.